started going to kindergarten in Jericho and I remember our first uh, chantation or song that we used to sing as kids. It was called Al-Arab Ahbabna wal Yahudi Klabna, which means Arabs are beloved and Jews are dogs. Didn't know what a Jew was, but was raised in a very anti-Semitic culture being Palestinian. So that was the prevalent thinking process of the Palestinian. So you can imagine going to school, walking outside my home, maybe seeing graffiti on the walls all over the streets. In fact, you won't find a square, you cannot find a square meter that doesn't have graffiti in all the walls of the Palestinian areas. And what kind of graffiti are we talking about? Statements like, we knock on the gates of heaven with the skulls of Jews. That to enter paradise, we must fight a jihad process. Going to school, my teachers, graduates from Al-Azhar University, will teach us Islamic eschatology, the studies of the ends of times. That the Jews will be destroyed to the point that the trees and the stones will cry out. There's a Jew hiding behind me. Come, O Muslim, come, O slave of Allah, come and kill him. This is a saying by the Prophet Muhammad. I even memorize it in Arabic. لا تقوم الساعة حتى تغلب طائفة من المسلمين طائفة من اليهود قيل أين يا رسول الله قال في بيت المقدس وأكناف بيت المقدس in Jerusalem and the surrounding nations that the trees will cry out and they will destroy the Jews. Yet I never asked myself as a Muslim what's the reason for this animosity? I believed what I was told. I believed the rhetoric and the propaganda that Jews stole Palestinian lands, Jews persecute Palestinians, Jews are prophet killers, Jews spread that cow disease, Jews put infertility drugs for Arabs so they don't have children, Jews, uh, uh, the international Zionist movement runs the world, the Jews run the Congress and the media in America, the West is taken over by Jews, Jews influence the West. So all this ideology that I had as a Muslim. I was married to a, a Mexican-American, Catholic basically, I wanted to convert her to Islam. And she said, why should I leave my heritage? I said, well, the Jews corrupted the Bible. Because in Muslim belief today, the Christians corrupted the New Testament and the Jews corrupted the Old Testament. She said, where are the corruptions? If you show me the corruptions, I'll become Muslim. So I purchased the Bible for $10 and I started to study it. And I was fascinated with what I discovered. I discovered that the very enemy that I have, Israel, has been predicted to come back to that land. I began to understand, to ask the question, why does my teaching in Islam hate the Jewish people so much? And the teaching in the Bible loves the Jewish people so much. I began to understand what is the connection of the Jewish people in that land? What is the connection of Christ towards Israel and the Jewish people? I was fascinated to find out in uh, Isaiah that he will come to fight for Jerusalem and for the holy hill itself. That in Joel chapter 3 I began to read that God will gather all the nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat and there he says I will enter into judgment with them on the account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the people, the Gentiles, they have also divided up my land. That God will judge the world for dividing the land of Israel. I was looking at evidence. I began to look at evidence. I was interested in evidence. And in the book of Hebrews, it says, faith is the thing hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. That God gave us a certain amount of evidence to believe either the Bible or the Quran is true. I began to examine the evidences between the two. I believe the Quran was true because of the classical Arabic language, of certain uh, things written in the Quran that has scientific evidence. There was science in the Quran. I began to document the science in the Quran that I learned uh, as I was in high school and growing up in the Middle East. And then I began to examine scientific evidence in the Bible. 
the Bible had much more scientific evidence. And all the so-called scientific evidence in the Quran were taken from the Bible. I began to look at the prophetic evidence, amazing part of the prophetic evidence. I counted 8,352 verses in prophetic evidence. No other book in history has so much prophetic evidence. I began to weigh these facts. I began to feel that there was a sound knocking on my heart. I began to understand when Christians tried to witness to me, I began to understand what they meant. I stand at the door and knock. Because I prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to show me the truth. I was afraid to make the commitment. Because to become a Christian in Islam is hell. The Quran has many verses of terrorism in it, you know. Your skin will melt and loose skin will come up and you just everlasting torment. But I knew that my investment in the Bible is immense because there is no way that all this evidence in the Bible can be just for no reason at all. God provided us with evidence. I wanted to invite Christ into my life, but I was afraid. And I, of course, wanted to convert my wife to Islam. It will hurt my manly image to convert to Christianity. But it was an investment, and I was offered that investment. I was offered a deal. Let me in, and I'll change your life. And I did. And what I remember is I said, come in, Lord Jesus. And that was it. The light bulb went on. I woke up my wife that night, I remember, and I asked her, I said, you know, honey, I know I was supposed to convert you to Islam. I was wrong. So I became a Christian. She couldn't believe it. We ended up getting baptized together. I began to understand my mission. And that was to follow Christ. I did not understand why I had that joy. I did not comprehend why I had this long suffering. I do not comprehend why I feel that I have to do the Lord's work from a terrorist who wanted to plant a bomb in the bank and <coughs> blew up this bank and wanted to kill a Jew all my life, wanted to take over and destroy Israel. And all of a sudden I became an ambassador, from a terrorist to an ambassador. I began to understand when Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And that's the only way to obtain salvation. If he is the only way, the truth and the life, without him there is no salvation. Without salvation, there is eternity in hell, and hell does exist. I urge any Muslim to read Psalm chapter 83. It talks about the Muslims coming to destroy Israel from becoming a nation. It says in the text, come they have said let us destroy it from becoming a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. It talks about the confederacy of Muslim nations coming against Israel. It talks, it talks about them losing the battle. Pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with thy storm. Let them know that you, whose name alone is the Lord. Well, wait a minute. The Muslims and the Arabs lost the war so they can know who the name of the Lord is? I thought the name of the Lord was Allah. But what is in a name after all? I began to ask myself, what does it mean by the name, knowing the name? Well, his name is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. This is about Jesus, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. No one can deny that that prophecy was fulfilled because no one else in the world is called these names but one man. You can deny that Jesus was God, but you cannot deny that he was not called God. You cannot deny that he was not called by a whole millions of Christians, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, that prophecy was fulfilled regardless what you believe. Why? What is the secret? Why would God come down and visit mankind and die on a cross such a humiliating death? Back to the garden. Everything went back to the garden when Adam sinned and somebody had to pay for the sin. That's the element that's rejected in Islam. If Islam rejects that Jesus paid for their sins, then they also must reject a martyr dying on the behalf of Muslims. They must reject a black stone taking away sins of Muslims when they go to the pilgrimage in Mecca. And if they take those away, 
what's left? There is no assurance to go to heaven. And that's the problem. That is the problem. Jesus was the bridge. He was the bridge builder. He was the one that solved the problem. God did not let his word to be changed or corrupted. For if God allows his word to be corrupted, then he's not God. They must reject a black stone, taking away sins of Muslims when they go to the pilgrimage in Mecca. And if they take those away, what's left? There is no assurance to go to heaven. And that's the problem. That is the problem. Jesus was the bridge. He was the bridge builder. He was the one that solved the problem. God did not let his word to be changed or corrupted. For if God allows his word to be corrupted, then he's not God. God protected his word. Ten commandments are ten commandments. Jesus is who he is, claimed from the Old Testament as well. There is no claims for Islam in the Quran. The only claims is the punishments that the Muslim world will get in the ends of times. As written in the books of Ezekiel 28, 29, 30, 31, Isaiah chapters 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Read them. Lebanon will be destroyed by the mighty one. That is very clear in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 19, the Lord will come in a swift cloud to fight Egypt. Isaiah 19, Muslim country. The Lord will come down, it says. He will come down personally. Habakkuk chapter 3, he will fight Midian, an Arab country. Isaiah 63, he will come out of Edom, the Arab Muslim world, with his garments sprinkled with blood. When Jesus comes to fight, he will come to fight the Muslims. Jesus is not a Muslim. Jesus is a Jew. The message of Christ has been predicted thousands of years ago. And all of a sudden when Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, produced a message that is contrary to that message. And the Bible warned us that there will be many false Christs amongst you. But God will bring out a remnant from these people. God will bring a remnant, come out of her, my people. And he will bring those remnant. And the remnant that will come out of Islam, he promises, he will be with him forever. We will reign with him from Jerusalem, not from Mecca. Jerusalem is the holy place. Mecca was never a holy place in the Bible. Abraham never built the Kaaba. Abraham lived in Israel. If you want to know what David Daoud said, then read his book, the Psalms. If you want to know what Zechariah said, read his book in the book of Zechariah. And in chapters 12 and 14 of the book of Zechariah, it warns the Muslims, I will make Jerusalem a trembling cup to all surrounding nations. The houses will be rifled and the women ravished. In other words, yes, the Muslims will partially take over Jerusalem. Then the Bible says, and the feeble amongst Judah will fight like King David. They will fight these enemies and God will be victorious and Jesus will stand on the Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives. It's very clear. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. God will fight. And when his feet stands on the Mount of Olives, there will be an earthquake. He will come to fight these armies that comes against Jerusalem. In other words, the source behind the Quran and the source behind the message of Muhammad was very satanic. It's not from God. Satan always tries to appear, makes himself to be God. You must examine the evidence. You must ask yourself, is killing people from God or is it from the devil? The devil hates humanity. God loves humanity. God wants to preserve our lives. And Jesus said, whoever seeks to lose his life will save it. And whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Losing our lives as Christians is not by blowing ourselves up. Losing our lives as Christians is as Jesus told us, I will send you a sheep amongst wolves. In other words, we are but sheep for the slaughter. We are a persecuted people. You want to find the truth? Go find where there is persecution. You will find the Christians being persecuted by who? By the Muslims. 
If Islam is the truth, then why does Islam persecute us? If we are the persecutor, then we are a lie. But we're being killed day and night. That's what the Bible even predicts. Crying out every day. And the martyrs in heaven will cry out too. For how long, O Lord? These martyrs, the Bible says, they were beheaded in the name of Jesus. There's no other people that want to behead people except in the Muslim world. Wake up, my Muslim friend. God will save one-sixth of these armies that comes against Jerusalem. Be part of those people that God will save and restore. Try it. You will be filled with joy, long-suffering, everlasting life. And if you die, you simply transfer to true martyrdom to be with Christ forever. I pray for my family all the time. Most people think that when you become a Christian and you're from a Muslim background that you hate your family. In fact, it's the opposite. The family hates us. This is why every Muslim should ask, why are we hated by our own family? Yet we still love our family. Because the Bible says, love your enemies. Do good to those who do evil to you. So we love our family. and. We pray for them continuously that they read the Bible. The Quran is not the truth, the Bible is. You, you cannot find the truth unless you go to the Bible and read what the Bible says. So I always pray for my family to read the Bible. <clears throat> I always pray that they pray in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The God, the only one God, the true God, to pray in His name to seek the truth and Jesus said and this is what I pray for them all the time that they seek with all their soul their heart their mind their might if you seek God with all your might with everything you got trust me you will find him as a matter of fact he will find you the Bible is the road map God has one road map and the devil has another road map the devil's road map is the wide gate in which he invents cults, religions, isms, and God has a narrow gate in which he tells us to detail what's going to happen in the future. I mean, it's amazing. How much evidence do we need to establish a case? I think the prophetic evidence in the Bible is overwhelming. I can spend a lifetime just talking about the prophetic evidence in the Bible. Yet, when I look at the Qur'an, I don't find hardly anything. What, that the Persians and the Romans will have a war? And Rome lost, and in the end they will win? That's no major prophecy. This is one of the prophecies in the Qur'an. That's like a soccer team playing a match. One of them is going to be the winner. What other prophecies is there in the Qur'an? Well, the Hadith has several prophecies in the Hadith. But those prophecies are the antithesis of what's in the Bible. These prophecies have been taken from the Bible, convoluted, in order to destroy the Muslim. Loving the Muslim is to tell them the truth. Loving the Muslim is to tell them their destiny. If I'm going to go to hell and you had the truth, and you didn't tell me that truth and I ended up going to hell for the rest of eternity I'm going to be cursing you for the rest of eternity for not telling me the truth telling the Muslim the truth is something that is an obligation for us as Christians we don't hate the Muslims to love the Muslims is to bring them out from eternal damnation this is why the Muslims think that our message is a hate message and it's not, it's a love message. We don't hate the Muslims. If I'm going to fall into a pit, I want you to stop me because if I fall into a pit and die, what use are you as a friend? I am your friend because I love you, because I want you to receive eternal salvation with Christ. You know, Muslims might ask the question, you know, can you be right? 
and 1.3 billion Muslims wrong? That's the question Muslims ask me. Wait a minute, you're telling us you're right and 1.3 billion Muslims are wrong. If you believe the story of Abraham, Noah, Jesus, Moses, pick any one of them. It usually is the case. One person is right and the whole world is wrong. Noah was right and the whole world drowned. Moses was right. Abraham was right. Jesus was right. The patriarchs of the Bible were right. Zechariah was right. One man is right and usually the majority are wrong. The truth is not held in democratic elections. Democracy and truth are two contrary things. Truth is truth. One man can be right and the whole world can be wrong. The converts from Islam are right and the majority of the Muslims are entering into the wide gate. They need to switch to the narrow gate. I know many of you won't believe it because you probably part of the wide gate. But if you choose the narrow gate, that's salvation.